Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death and welcome back to my Let's Play Space Engineer series. Today we are going to have a bit of a tutorial on something near and dear to everyone's heart. How to hit what you're aiming at. This is not a particularly new or complex idea, but it's still quite effective. Imagine, if you will, you have a World War II fighter with a whole bunch of guns underneath the wings. If you go to shoot at another fighter, all you end up doing is damaging their wings instead of hitting the soft nougaty center where all the vital bits are. If both ships are maneuvering, this becomes even more difficult as you just end up spraying the entire region with bullets and not really killing your target. The obvious solution is to angle your guns so that you get a more concentrated firepower. There are a number of different methodologies for how to do this. The first and simplest is to angle the guns so that they all focus on a single point. Another option is to angle each pair of guns differently so that you get a kind of cone effect. In this instance we have the inner guns angled in so that they converge closer to the ship and then as you step out to the outer guns they are angled out a little bit farther. Here we have another option for angling the individual pairs differently. In this particular example the inner pair of guns is angled out the furthest, while the outer pairs of guns are angled in the closest. The idea being that the inner pair of guns are going to be close to the aiming point anyway, so having them out the furthest will allow them to be effective over a larger range. Combine this with the fact that you can also angle things vertically as well as laterally you end up with dozens, even hundreds, of different options for how you angle your guns. Which option you choose boils down mostly to personal preference, the design of your ship, and the design of your target ship. You need to consider who is going to be controlling the range. If your opponent is faster and more maneuverable than you are, then that probably means that you're going to want a more of a cone type of fire convergence. But if you're controlling the range, you can go to a single point convergence. Of course, if you're slower, that also means you're probably more heavily armored than your opponent. So having a single or multiple points of convergence should still be effective. Missiles are a little bit tricky to work with. This is because even though the convergent point is set over there at the wall, missiles have a larger size than bullets and will detonate closer to the ship because they collide with each other and you get a bit of fratricide. So that means you need to set your convergent point for missiles a bit further than you actually want the impact point. There are however some downsides to having to set up weapons to converge. The first of which is resupplying the weapons with ammo. If you watched my last episode, you will have seen how I built this Corvette 
in how I've dealt with that for lordships. We have some pistons. And at the end of the pistons, some connectors. And those connectors connect to our angled weapons. We're using pistons, extended pistons, because they have a bit of flex in them. So that even with these locks, you can still slightly adjust the weapons without having to unlock the connectors. That is the way you would do it for large ships. Small ships are quite a bit more complicated. The easiest way to deal with the guns is simply to attach some small cargo containers directly to the converged weapons. That will give you more ammo capacity, but it is going to be a pain to reload between sorties. A less space conscious, but more convenient design is where you have conveyor tubes coming from the gun connected to a connector and then you have a connector built into the ship that is then connected to the ship's main storage area. This allows you to automatically reload your guns. It does however mean that you can mount fewer guns due to the size of it. You would also use a method similar to this for reloadable rocket launchers. Though you may want to stand them 90 degrees over. Unreloadable rocket launchers work quite well just like this without any kind of additional stuff. Another potential problem is that guns have recoil and with them mounting on the rudders like they are the ship's inbuilt gyroscopes will not counteract the torque. One way to deal with that is to build the guns along the center of mass so that they do not provide any torque at all. A second option is to mirror the guns around the center of mass so that the guns above counteract the re recoil from the guns below and vice versa. Before we move on to more advanced designs we need to discuss the math involved in calculating the convergence. As I said it is not particularly complex and anyone who's had high school trigonometry can probably do it in their sleep. However, I realize that there are a number of people that live in mortal terror of math, so I've compiled a handy reference sheet. There should be a link on screen about now, as well as a link in the description to the Google document. All you need to do is count the number of blocks from the center of your weapons to the center of the convergence point. In this case, that is three. There is the block here, the block here, then half a block to the center of this block, and half a block to the center of the guns. So a total of three small blocks. And the reference sheet is listed in the number of blocks from the center both small blocks and large blocks as well as the distance to the target or to the convergence point. That way you can merely copy and paste the numbers from the reference sheet into the rotor and not have to worry about any kind of math. For those who do want to know how to calculate the math we'll get into that now. The formula is simply arc cosine, also known as inverse cosine, of a squared plus b squared minus c squared divided by 2 times a times b, where c is the distance between the gun and the center, 
in meters, recalling that a small block is 0.5 meters and a large block is 2.5 meters. B is the distance to the convergent point or the target. And A is the hypotenuse. For example, if our guns are 1.5 meters from the center and we want them to converge at 100 meters, the hypotenuse becomes 100.011 and the rudders need to be set at 0 0.859 degrees. In this final example, we will take advantage of something our hypothetical World War II fighters were not able to do, and that is adjust our convergence on the fly. I have one example of how to do that set up. In this example, we start off with our guns converging 100 meters from the ship. With the press of a button, they now converge 200 meters from the ship. And with the press of another button, they now converge 300 meters from the ship. And with the press of a final button, they converge somewhere between the first two. And then back to the beginning. This particular method is quite space efficient, only requiring three extra timers. Here is how it works. We have the upper limit, or that is the highest angle convergence set to be the degrees for 100 meters. The lower limit is set to be the degrees for 300 meters. And then we have the velocity set so that in one second, the angle adjusts from the upper limit to the 200 meter convergence degree mark. A little bit of math in calculating the velocity, but that's really the only difficult thing here. And even that's quite simple. Then we have a couple of timers, or a few timers. This one, which we trigger now, starts the second timer block and reverses all the rotors. The rotors are currently pushing them towards their closest convergent point angle. The second timer block only goes for a second and then turns off all the rotors. And the third timer block merely turns on all the rotors and pushes them to that third convergence point. The, fir the fourth convergence point is by triggering the first timer block again so that the rotors move one second from the outer limit towards the inside, giving you four different convergence points with just two different button presses. There are other ways you could do multiple profiles for your convergence, such as stacking rotors and having a whole slew of presets for each different rotor. And I imagine people can think of some more interesting ways to do it as well. But that is it for this episode. Next episode... Actually, between episodes, I think I'm going to look at the modding code that they released a couple of patches back. I have not got a chance to look at that yet. That means that I will probably delay the next episode a little bit while I look at that. I don't intend to make a mod or anything, but I just want to have a look at how it works. 
if I start the next episode before the next patch, we will probably be returning to our survival world and doing some work there. If I start it after the patch and there is something interesting in the patch, we may be doing something with that. But I expect the next episode will probably not be until next weekend. Anyway, like if you like, subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.